Hello, this is Greg from SharePoint Maven, and in this video, I would like to provide you with an overview of all the security groups we have within Office 365. Now, uh, this video is probably geared more towards, um, you know, those in IT, those who have access to the uh, Office 365 admin center, which is where I am at the moment. Uh, but if you are a site owner uh, managing security for your own sites, I think it might be beneficial for you as well. Uh, to be familiar at least with the all the different security groups we have within Office 365 in case obviously if you want to uh, you know to to use them uh, to secure your sites you know files and folders so we actually have a total of four security uh, groups uh, or a total of four groups I should say within Office 365 and I would like to provide you a brief overview of all of them so I am right now in Office 365 admin center all right and I navigated to groups, all right? And this is essentially where you can see all the groups, all the different types of security groups that exist in your uh, in your tenant. And if you notice, right, I, it, it, it shows me the different types. You know, some of them are Office 365 uh, security groups. Some of them are just plain security groups, distribution list, et cetera. So let me explain to you the difference between um, the uh, four of them. So if I actually click on add a group, uh, it gives me the four choices, all right? This is the four choices we have. We have Office 365 security group. We have a distribution um, list. We have a mail enabled security as well as just a security group. So let me provide you with an overview of all, of all of them. So I'll start at the bottom with the security, regular security group. This is actually a good old Active Directory security group that you, your organization um, probably has been utilizing for, for many, many years. We can still create it from here as well. All right, we can still create a, a regular security group uh, from here as well, but most likely, most likely uh, your organization, if you migrated from file shares to Office 365, most likely your organization uh, is already using those ID groups and probably synchronize them to your Office 365 tenant. This particular security group um, we have historically, we have pretty much been utilizing them to manage security, um, you know, for files and folders that were probably located on your file shares. All right. And the cool thing about those security groups is that you can uh, embed those security groups, uh, Active Directory security groups inside of SharePoint security groups. So uh, if you created a site, let's say, and you quickly want to add, uh, let's say, 20 members of the team, you can just add, create a security group at the tenant level, add 20 users to, to that particular security group, and pretty much, um, you know, give access to, to a number of users, uh, um, you know, just by adding one security group instead of typing all the names, all right? Um, so that's what this particular security group is all about. Um, I'll come back to mail enable security uh, group in a second. I'll cover distribution list. Distribution list is actually not a security group, all right, um, because obviously all it is is just a distribution list. It's just a distribution list, um, like you know we we set up in the past uh, from Exchange. Um, let's say you have a uh, ten people, you know ten people part of the department or project. You want to quickly create a distribution list for them, so uh, by sending an email. Uh, to uh, that list, you will pretty much reach all 10 people at once. That's essentially what this is for. This is not a security group, all right? When you create a distribution list, this is not a security group at all. Uh, it's just literally just a distribution list, a way for you to uh, send an email uh, at once to all the members uh, of the list, of the distribution list, all right? Mail enabled security group is pretty much distribution list and security combined together, all right? So if you want to get the benefits of the security group, but you also want to be able to send an email to, um, you know, to um, the same group of users, in that case, you will create a mail enabled security group. And of course, the benefit of this particular group is that first of all, you can manage it, you know, this particular group for security in case if you want to secure files and folders or uh, your SharePoint site. And at the same time, if you want to send an email to the same group of users, you can just send an email uh, to that the distribution list uh, email address. So you kind of get, um, you know, a little bit of both, you know, best uh, best of both uh, worlds, if you will. All right, so uh, that's what Mail Enable Security Group is all about. Uh, the last option is Office 365 Security Group. This is obviously, you can even see it as recommended 
Uh, essentially, what an Office 365 security group is, and I covered this many, many times on my blog and my YouTube channel already, but this is what essentially it's all about, all right? Uh, Office 365 uh, group uh, is a relatively new entity we have within Office 365. It is a security group by design, by default. Um, from the user standpoint, it's also more of a membership group because that, you know every time you create one of those groups, it's not just creating a security group. It actually is creating everything you see on this image. All right. So when you create one of those groups, you end up with a SharePoint site. You get a, you end up with a calendar. You can connect a team to it. You um, can have a plan planner, which is a task management tool, and you also have a distribution list. So you get some of these components we could get previously, but we also get so much more. And this is obviously a recommended option uh, for obvious reasons, uh, because that's kind of the new way how we uh, how we manage security in SharePoint. Uh, just to show you, just to show you, let me uh, exit out of here. If I navigate to my SharePoint start page, if I create a site over here, all right. If I create a team site, essentially behind the scenes, it's creating an, an Office 365 group, all right. And it doesn't actually matter where you start. Um, it doesn't really matter where you start. You can create a team from Teams. You can create a site from SharePoint, which is what just I, uh, which is what I just showed you. You can create Plan and Planner. You can create a group from Outlook. Doesn't matter where you start. You end up with everything you see on this particular image. All right, and it's all backed by, um, you know, from membership standpoint. Uh, by this particular security group. So whoever is the member of this, this group, they have access to all the resources uh, of that particular, you know, Office 365 group. All right. Um, there are more than 20 ways to create one of those groups. I just showed you a few, right? You know, I showed it to you. Uh, I just showed you how to create a group from uh, uh, SharePoint side of things. You can obviously create a group from uh, uh, the admin center. Uh, there are more than 20 locations where you can create this group from. All right. Uh, and again, you know, this is the this is obviously a very popular option. Um, and another cool, another kind of unique thing about this, this option is that you see all this security groups that I showed you, right? All this security groups that I showed you uh, that um, you know typically IT team uh, in, in, you know would create from the admin center, uh, the Office 365 groups. Um, I mean, are created by your end users, at least by default. If you disable that, obviously that's not the case. But by default, every any time an end user creates uh, creates a new team in Teams or creates a new site from SharePoint, you end up with a an, a, an Office 365 security group, um, you know, by um, uh, by default by design. So it's not even an IT thing anymore. Again, the security groups, unla uh, unlike all these other security groups, right, and distribution lists. Uh, that are created by your IT team, the Office 365 groups, security groups are created uh, by your end users. All right. So that's all I wanted to show you today. Hopefully you learned something new. Hopefully you now understand the difference between the four different types of groups we have within Office 365. As always, happy to see you uh, on my blog, sharepointmaven.com, as well as my YouTube channel. Thank you very much and have a great rest of the day. Goodbye.